that you can now fail practicals. What's up, everybody? Bryce, your favorite AMP, IA, and Part 147 instructor, back again with another video. And today I'm going to be talking about what changes the ACS has had on the oral and practical test and four things that you can expect and what you should probably study for. But before I get into any of that, I wanted to remind you, uh, join the Discord, leave us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. All of those things really help um, with the channel making money. And the more channel, the more money the channel makes, the more often that I can do giveaways and things and give back to the community. Obviously, the last giveaway I did was for a $100 gift card to Aircraft Spruce. I'm very close to making that money back. Obviously, I've got you know $700, $800 invested in this channel at this point. But none of that matters. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making the videos and I enjoy being as helpful as I can. So please share this video with your friends and all of that if you find it helpful. So the first thing that we need to understand about the testing procedure is that under the new ACS, the FAA has contracted the oral and practical test to PSI, just like they did the written. So when you call DME and you schedule your test, you have to give him your FTN tracking number and your written scores, and he will put that information into PSI, and PSI will generate the test for you. Now, I spoke with um, the most local DME to me, I will say, and he had told me that when PSI does this, it's based on your written scores, which we've all known that, but he had a guy who got a 70 on his airframe written, and he was asked 29 questions. He had another guy who got a 93 and was asked 20 questions. So it could be that the more questions you get wrong in one section for, or subsection, for example, basic electricity, you're going to get a lot of oral questions on basic electricity. If you kind of miss a bunch of questions throughout, then you might have a more rounded um, oral test. The second thing he told me was is that the oral test is a little bit different order than it used to be. Before, when you went in and you took your general or your airframe or your power plant, he would go through each subsection one at a time, making his way down the list. So you would get all of your FARS questions, all of your basic or air, air aviation science questions, all of your basic electricity, and so on and so forth. But now the questions are all in just big one big random lump. So you might get you know, a basic electricity question, and then the next question is coming from shot practices, and then the next question is coming from weight and balance, and then we're back to FARS and kind of all over the place. So what does this mean for you? Well, you shouldn't really notice any difference or care because you never had to test under the old system, which was the PTS. Just be aware that your oral questions are going to be in one big lump, sort of asked randomly, and of course you do have to get a 70, or a minimum of 70, on each subsection. Or I should say the second thing that you can expect is that when you are doing your practical exams, you are going to have two more oral questions asked per each practical subsection while you are performing that task. For example, if you were shooting a rivet for sheet metal, you will probably have another question that says, you know, what is edge distance supposed to be? And that would be your oral question that you then have to answer. Now, fortunately for you, when you take the practical section, that is open book. So if the DME asks you an oral question during your practical, I've been told that you are allowed to open the book and research those two questions. The third thing, and probably the most beneficial to you, is that you can now fail practicals. So you still have to pass all of your practicals with a 70, but if there's 10 practicals for airframe, you have to pass seven of them. You can fail three of them, which is kind of really good because this means that you don't so much have to worry about getting exactly 100% of your practicals right to move on. Under the PTS, if you failed one practical project, you had to retake that entire section. Under the ACS, failing one practical project doesn't prevent you from getting your A or your P, you'll just you know keep going and it still counts as a pass. So I think that's probably a little bit more beneficial for people that are moving forward. The fourth and final thing that I would like to bring up is what you should study. Now, the DME that I spoke to said that the people that he has tested thus far studied Jeppesen, Oral and Practical Study Guide, and did okay. However, I have heard from YouTube comments and from other people in the Discord and things that the ASA slash the Prepware study guide is a little better. Now, you're probably not gonna like my advice, but it is this. Why not study both? A lot of the material is very much the same, 
and you're going to see the same questions reworded. There might be questions in Jeppesen that they don't have in ASA. There might be questions in ASA that they don't have in Jeppesen. But why not go ahead and study both and improve your chances of getting a, as good a foundation on the oral questions as you can. Now, the DME did also tell me that during your oral examination, not all of the questions are verbatim, and there are quite, not I'm not gonna say quite a few, but there are a couple sort of off the wall, left field questions that you may get. So, just like they were doing with the writtens, it appears that some of the questions are being flipped. So the answer is becoming the question and the question is becoming the answer. For example, um, I remember in wooden fabric, I don't even know if that's a section anymore under the ACS, I'm pretty sure it's not. It's just lumped into non-metallic structures. But under wood, there was a question that, you know, what is the most common wood used in air aviation? And the answer was Sitka spruce. Well, the question might be reworded to say that Sitka spruce is the most common wood used in what? And the answer would be, what is aviation for 500, Trebek? I don't know, right? But my point is they could flip those and then you might get one or two left field questions. So it probably is a little more important that you understand the systems better than just memorizing the question and memorizing the answer. So there you go, everybody. That's pretty much gonna do it for this video. I hope you found this information helpful. Um, as always, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, go build something and be easy.